For the second part of periodic functions, we're just going to be looking at a few examples and trying to understand um, how to work with these a little more, especially the writing in simpler form. So let's just get started with this. Uh, we could answer number two without graphing. Sometimes the graph is helpful because you can visualize it, but it's not necessary. So we will, in this case, start off with graphing it. So if, uh, we want our function to be y equals negative 1 between 0 and 3. So from 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, the function should be at negative 1. So we'll put circles at 0 and 3, draw a segment, and we look at our signs here to see if we open or close our circles. The At 0, it should be open. At 3, it should be closed. Moving on to the next part, 1. And we want that from 3 to 5. So we're at 3. We want this to be at 1. 3, 4, 5. That's at 1. And again, open circle on the right, closed. Sorry, on the left, closed on the right. And then the next portion, we want it to be at 2. We want that from 5 to 6. So that's going to be at 2 from 5 to 6. Same thing, closed on the right and open on the left. And now we're actually back to negative 1 again. Now, going back to negative 1 doesn't guarantee that it's the, the beginning of another cycle, but it's a good indication. So it does take up 3 units, just like it did up here. It has an interval of 3, so that goes from... 6 to 9, and then it's negative 1, sorry, 1 uh, from 9 to 11, and it's at 2 from 11 to 12. We could move our way to the left of zero, kind of following the pattern. So it looks like here's the period. Period, there's our one our one cycle, and then it, there it is again in that little interval. If you want to, you could continue graphing. You can keep our colors here if you want. I'll just do one more cycle here. All right, so there's a graph of it. It could keep continuing to the left on our graph if you wanted to. It says, give the period domain and range. I did already section off the period here with these uh, dashed lines. It looks like the period is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six units, or so the period is going to be 6. The domain, well, it looks like the whole x-axis would be covered if we collapsed everything on the x-axis, so the domain is the real numbers, and the range, because we can write it out here, range. Well, the range is only three numbers. It's either negative 1, 1, or 2. Again, we could have noticed that from up here, in our original function, we notice that 0 to 3, 3 to 5, 5 to 6, um, we see those numbers. This is for the domain that I'm talking about. There's no numbers missing, and they always get everything. It's not like there's two open circles on top of each other, so that's the domain. And the range, actually, you can see the only numbers we ever get are negative 1, 1, and 2. The period being 6... We see our negative 1, 1, and 2, negative 1, 1, and 2, so that's the where it keeps repeating, and we see from 0 to 6 is our period. All right, now it says find f of 20 and f of negative 8. Well, the way that we graph to f, finding f of negative 8 isn't going to be too bad because I think that's on our graph. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... 7, 8. Actually, it's not. 
So we could pretty easily keep going. So this is one unit, and then this one is two units. And so at negative eight, we're at one. There's another way to think through that. F of 20, we could kind of think through the same thing, but so F of 20, 20 is not on our graph. There's a few different ways to think through this, but we know our period is six. So we're gonna take, well, our period is six, and our graph, we can, it doesn't start at zero, but we can think of one period starting here at zero, which is helpful. So we can take uh, 20. We're going to divide by the period. And we're not actually going to divide it out with a decimal. We're just going to say that's 3. And because 6 times 3 is 18, and we have a remainder of 2. So the fact that we have a full 3, that's full 3 cycles, and then a remainder of 2. So the remainder helps us figure out how far we are kind of from our starting point. And again, I know it's not a starting point, but that's what I usually call it. So at the beginning of our cycle, we are 2 away from the beginning of our cycle. Um, so uh, 1, 2, our function is at negative one <clears throat> negative one so f of 20 is going to be negative one now writing it in a simpler form this is we call it f of x and f of x will only equal three one of three things we're going to go back up it equals negative one one or two Negative 1, 1, or 2. And here's where we think through our period. So we're going to take our period, multiply it times k, which is going to be represented by some integer. Now, we, the way that we start this is we're going to let k equal 0 to help us get started. It doesn't always have to equal 0. But that will help us get us started in this first part to figure out where everything is. Well, if k is 0... 6k would be 0, and that kind of gives us our 0 spot. And how would we get to this 3? How do we get from 0 to 3? Well, we just add 3. So we can say this is less than x, which is less than or equal to 6k plus 3. I have to keep going back and forth here, but our next part here is from 3, which is the same, so 3 to 5. Well, 6 plus k plus 3 gives us the 3 is less than x. And how do we get from 0 to 5? Because remember, this 6k is our 0 in this case. 6k represents 0. Well, it's 6k plus 5. And then our last part is going to be from 5, 6k plus 5 to 6. So we would do 6k plus 6. And there it is written in a simpler form.